Hello, everyone. Welcome to News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. I'm your host, Roger Colton. April is Fair Housing Month, and today I have with me Rachel Heller and Betsy Lipson, co-chairs of the Belmont Housing Trust. Rachel, uh, Betsy, thanks for joining us. There is a Fair Housing uh, public meeting coming up uh, this week. Can you tell us what's happening and when? Yes, our event is on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Uh, we are co-sponsoring this with the Belmont Human Rights Commission and Belmont Against Racism. The event is called Belmont's Road to Housing Equity, and it will provide us an opportunity to learn about the history of the Fair Housing Act, Belmont's housing needs, and to think about opportunities for equitable developments that can foster inclusive, welcoming, and vibrant neighborhoods. Betsy, the, the town of Belmont has spent, particularly in the last couple of years with the McLean development, a lot of time talking about affordable housing. Can you tell us the difference between fair housing and affordable housing, or is there a difference? Yeah, that's a great question. So when we go back to the origin of the uh, Fair Housing Act, it was um, part of the civil rights legislation in 1968. And people often think of fair housing in terms of discrimination in renting and selling. It really is a two-part um, law in that it, it is also about um, the discrimination and opportunity for housing. Um, and that's what we have continued to try to promote in Belmont. And I think it's really now on people's minds across the country. Um, so when we talk about affordable housing, it is true in this country that very often low income households are also minority households. And that has to do with our racist past. Um, so when we talk about affordable housing, we're talking both about market rate housing that has um, units set aside uh, for lower incomes. And we're also talking about um, other types of affordable housing. There are many different types. So we might talk about section eight uh, housing choice vouchers. We might talk about public housing. Um, for the purposes of the event tomorrow, we're really gonna focus on market rate, deed restricted affordable housing. And that is exactly what, as you just said, we um, spent a long time working with um, different groups in town to do for the McLean plan. Now, when P you mentioned discrimination, when people think of discrimination, they often think, or maybe even most often think, of discrimination based on race, race or ethnicity. But discrimination really goes beyond race and ethnicity. Uh, it extends to families or uh, kids. Can, can, am I right in that? Yes, absolutely. Yes, familial status is one of the protected classes. And does Belmont have a concern uh, about that? Or does everybody have a concern about that? Everybody has a concern about that. Um, you know, it's really, we have, a, we have a long history in Belmont, in Massachusetts, across this country of discriminatory housing policies that have really perpetuated segregation and high housing costs. And a lot of the decisions, really all the decisions that are made in our communities translate into who can live there and who cannot. And so when we are making choices about um, senior housing versus family housing, rather than homes that can provide opportunities for any type of household, that's a time for us to, to stop and think about, are we meeting the housing needs of all protected classes? And why would the, the ordinary person, uh, the person who isn't on the planning board is, is not in town meeting, why, why would they care? Or how does it affect them? Yeah, Rachel, I'll start. And then I know you certainly have more to add. Um, I think that's a great question. And it, it, it's one that a lot of people are asking themselves right now. Um, we are in an inflection point in this country and actually I think globally in considering um, the opportunities that have been afforded to many white households and white individuals that are not afforded to people of color. And in the United States, we, as I mentioned earlier, we do have this history to look back on and just understand. So it's, I think it's always helpful to have experts like we will have tomorrow night 
um, walk through the history and connect dots. Because when we read news articles or when we watch a movie on a topic, we consider an issue just in a silo. It's very often to have, uh, helpful to have somebody walk through the history with a narrative and explain why something like the Fair Housing Act or the notion of affordable housing, why that has to do with the um, racial, racial justice um, awakening that we've been um, going through in this country over the last year. So when we look around town and we see the Black Lives Matter signs um, here and elsewhere in the country, um, I think a lot of people are saying, well, I'm not racist. So really, is it something that I need to care about? Does fair housing matter to me? And what we wanna do with this event is say, it's now time to go to the next step. So zoning changes, for example, might be an opportunity to recognize that being anti-racist also is about policy change. And, and Rachel, Betsy said that she predicted you would have something mm -hmm. to add. Is there anything you wanted to add to that? No, I think Betsy covered it well. Um, we are all impacted by our communities and by lack of opportunity. When, a, when any group of people are left out of our community, that impacts us all. Um, you know, when we did the housing production plan, that was really a community process that helped us to identify housing needs and think about how we could address our challenges. We found that there were a few populations that are really feeling our high housing costs more than others. And that included seniors, young families with children. We saw real discrepancies between renters and homeowners and, and the housing burden. And also we found that while Belmont has, is, is growing in diversity, we have a very small population when it comes to black households and they are disproportionately lower income. And so we need to ask ourselves, how do we foster more diversity, more inclusivity? How are we more welcoming? And that really comes down to what kinds of land use decisions we're making and what kind of homes we're creating here. Let's talk about tomorrow night specifically, uh, or talk about the session that, uh, uh, that's going to be help. Uh, what will people know after they attend the session that they didn't know before they attended? Mm -hmm. We have a great panel of speakers coming. We have Bob Terrell, who's an expert on fair housing. Uh, he is the former executive director of the Fair Housing Center of Greater Boston. He's going to provide us with some political, with, with historical context and also looking at the parallels politically between when the Fair Housing Act was passed right after the assassination of Martin Luther King and today. Uh, we'll also hear from Katherine Einstein, who's a professor at Boston University and also uh, the, the Assistant Director of Policy at the Center for Anti-Racist Housing. She's done research about what guides decision-making in Massachusetts land use uh, decision, or sorry, what, uh, what guides decisions um, in local land use uh, meetings in Massachusetts. And she'll help us to understand how these policies are shaped and what are the outcomes. Um, we'll also hear from Jared Johnson, who's the executive director of Transit Matters. He'll talk about the new laws in Massachusetts that require communities to zone for multifamily housing and the opportunities that brings to a community to really become a more vibrant, walkable, bikeable, and inclusive place. Now, the, the town of Belmont uh, obviously just recently voted no on a proposed override. And there will be some folks who say, we don't need any more housing of, of any kind in the town of Belmont. Uh, uh, is a session such as uh, the one that you're hosting uh, going to address uh, something like that? Yeah, I'll, Rachel, let me start and then I'd like you to pick up. Um, I do wanna say that what's interesting about um, the idea of trying to refrain from more housing um, multi-family housing and such, and really sticking with what we have in terms of zoning. Um, it's basically playing the same um, tune that has been played by Boston suburbs um, for decades and decades. Uh, so when we go back to our last um, inflection point um, with the Civil Rights Act in the um, early, mid, late 60s, early 70s, um, a number of laws came out at that time and a number of reports that pointed out what Boston suburbs in particular were doing around zoning. And 
there's some great data on what people were saying in public meetings in resisting the idea of change. Um, and I raise that because that's the kind of wonky stuff I like to read. And actually when you read it, you see that the exact same statements are being made today. And although people really don't, um, they really don't want to be exclusive when they're making those statements, in the end, they are exclusive. And we have to start to recognize that if home ownership or access to high opportunity towns like Belmont are not available to all, then we really are um, limiting who has an opportunity either to uh, climb an economic mobility ladder by accessing um, the assets of a home or by gaining the value of our great schools here and our great community. We have a really rich community in terms of social capital. And that is exactly what a lot of, how, a lot of people need in order to um, get a leg up in life. Yeah, and I'd say in addition to, I agree with everything Betsy has said, of course. And um, I also think a lot about how uh, residents in Belmont do tend to talk about getting more of a commercial tax base and the importance of doing that. Well, in order to do that, it really goes hand in hand, um, housing and commercial. Uh, we, we have a lot of opportunities around transit and our commercial centers to add more homes. That helps to create more foot traffic. It helps to get businesses, more business. Um, it really creates an environment where people can, can walk and be uh, visiting our local businesses, spending money. Um, so it's really, it, it's really important that the two go hand in hand and we think about how can we take our, our, our centers and, um, and add housing and have that vibrancy that we want to see and have more of a balance between our commercial and our residential tax base? That's great. Thanks for joining us today. Rachel Heltz Heller and Betsy Lipson, co-chairs of the Belmont Housing Trust, talking about a fair housing public uh, uh, forum to be held Thursday night, April 29th. Uh, thanks for joining us. You've been watching News Now. I'm your host. I'll talk with you next time.